This video is brought to you by Squarespace. Stick around to the end of the video for a special offer they're making available through my channel. Gamers, hope you're having a great week, or at least a better week than old mate Johnny Walker. Yeesh. I am feeling better, thank you for asking. Refreshed and recharged after playing a week's worth of Outriders for my review. Link in the description. Did you know that in addition to Outriders having disastrous server and client stability, it also has a new bug that deletes players' entire inventories? The bug was quite rare until People Can Fly tried to fix it, but the patch only seemed to make things worse as more and more people began reporting that the gear they had grinded for dozens or hundreds of hours plus was gone. People Can Fly are still working on these issues and they promise to restore any and all of the deleted items, but I think right now you might just want to hold off on logging in until they have this issue locked down. Avengers must be over here like, phew, finally another looter came out that people could hate on for a while. Feels nice to be out of the headlines. Enjoy it while you can, Avengers. Enjoy it while you can. This week's award for biggest L goes to Epic Games because well, they really did achieve a pretty massive L. Their court case with Apple is ongoing, and as part of that, we got access to some of Epic's financials. Turns out that the Epic Game Store isn't doing so well. That's a pretty big understatement. Epic lost 181 million on the storefront in 2019, and 273 million in 2020. That's 181 plus 273. Three plus one is carry the. That's a lot of money, a lot, okay? Most of this expense can be attributed to securing exclusive games and giving away lots of free games. Over $2,400 worth last year alone, in fact. You'd think that Epic would be a little bit upset at this loss, but nope. Epic CEO Tim Sweeney is crowing about it, it seems. He responded to the article on Twitter saying, quote, That's right, and it has proven to be a fantastic success in reaching gamers with great games and a fantastic investment into growing the business. Lots of exclamation marks in that one, by the way. Sweeney would go on to say that it's kind of like building a factory or a store or a game where investment today creates revenue into the future. But like, what future is he imagining exactly? I mean, we all get our movies, TV shows and music from streaming platforms these days. And that's very much the way the wind is blowing in the world of video games as well. I fully support proper game ownership and the survival of physical media, but you have to wonder if Epic is blowing hundreds of millions of dollars to buy into a market that will be drastically smaller in 5 to 10 years time. Anyway, it's Epic's money, they can do what they like with it as long as they keep giving us free games. That's fine with me. This week was a very big week for PlayStation news. There's a whole bunch of stories here, so buckle up. It started when Jason Schreier of Bloomberg published a piece titled, Sony's obsession with blockbusters is stirring unrest within the PlayStation empire. He detailed some of the internal politics at play within Sony at the moment, namely that some of the key talent wasn't given the chance to shine on new IP. Sony was apparently risk averse, preferring to stick with existing franchises and to have those projects managed by flagship studios like Naughty Dog. The result was an exodus of key talent, not only from the more famous Japan studio, but also from Sony's internal teams who work behind the scenes to help ensure PlayStation's high standard of excellence. This piece also shed some light on the fate of Ben Studio, makers of Siphon Filter, but most recently Days Gone, the open world zombie apocalypse game exclusive to the PlayStation. Ben had pitched Days Gone 2 to Sony, who turned it down owing to some lower than expected sales and a mixed critical reception. A lot of people are sad about this, and I was surprised to see how much positive sentiment there was for Days Gone, particularly from journalists who had devoted many column inches to calling it shitty or mocking it for some of its more cringy writing. For what it's worth, I like Days Gone, but I kind of agree that it doesn't need a sequel. Personally, I don't think Bend have yet arrived at their own Horizon Zero Dawn. Anyway, part of Bend was supporting Naughty Dog on a multiplayer title, probably The Last of Us 2's multiplayer, and the other part of Bend were working on a new Uncharted game. It's so crazy. Anyway, Bend's leadership weren't happy with this. Some of them left, the rest worried that they would eventually be absorbed into Naughty Dog. They asked to be taken off the project, and that request was granted. They are now working on their own game that will be part of a brand new franchise. Good for them. The craziest news out of this article is that Sony are remaking the Last of Us, the game that was released in 2013 for PS3 and remastered for PS4 in 2014. It's probably the dumbest remaster I've ever heard of. And Shadow Man Remastered exists. 
comes out this week on PC. Seriously though, what the fuck is this? The Last of Us is fine. It still holds up. It still feels positively contemporary by many of today's standards. Why the hell would you remaster this game when there are so many other dead franchises that could be resurrected? Soul Reaver is right there. For the love of God, someone remake Soul Reaver. Crystal Dynamics, please. I promise to never make another joke about the Avengers if you agree to do it. This whole situation has caused a lot of discussion about Sony and how it's approached this generation, with many saying that Sony have lost touch or are slipping back into the risk-averse arrogance that cost them the PS3 era. I think it's too early to be making those sorts of calls, but I'm sure we can all agree on one thing. Remaking The Last of Us is a stupid idea and a colossal waste of Sony's resources. Speaking of wasting resources, Sony are pushing hard into mobile. I mean, I'm half joking since mobile is a big thing and some of the releases over the past 12 months have shown us just how much potential mobile has, but still we know how most mobile gaming efforts go and they usually aren't much to write home about. Sony are hiring a head of mobile that will be, quote, responsible for building and scaling a team of mobile leaders and will serve as the head of this new business unit within PlayStation Studios and focus on successfully adapting PlayStation's most popular franchises to mobile. Yeah, I'm gonna keep my skeptical hat on for this one. Finally, if you were wondering whether or not Sony would try and swing back at the huge right hook that is Game Pass, you might be pleased to learn, maybe? God of War and Twisted Metal creator David Jaff said, quote, What I can tell you is that I know they are doing some stuff because I know people at Sony who have told me they are doing some stuff. He continued, there will be a response to Game Pass. It's not surprising given the fact that Game Pass is so damn good and such ridiculous value. No way could Sony let that sort of product go unanswered. Looks like the sort of free stuff section of this video will only continue to get chunkier each week. No complaints here. Bonus round for you Sony fans. If you were hoping that Kojima's next masterpiece would make its way to PlayStation consoles, you might want to check those expectations. VentureBeat's Jeff Grubb has a pretty good track record for Inside Goss, and he reports, quote, Kojima is in talks with Microsoft about publishing his next game, according to a source familiar with the matter, and yes, the statue on Phil Spencer's shelf was referencing a potential deal with the legendary developer. I cannot confirm if Xbox closed the deal yet. My understanding is that Kojima is the focus of a Microsoft plan to tap into Japanese talent. I shudder to think what Twitter would be like the day this news is revealed to be true. Here's something to cheer you up. The battle against loot boxes continues. This week in Brazil, one of their regulatory bodies recommended that loot boxes be deemed gambling, which would mean that developers would be fined up to $700,000 a day for putting loot boxes into their games. You absolutely love to see it. The move comes as Germany enacts sweeping legislation banning the sale of games with loot boxes to miners, as well as a broader push across the globe to clamp down on a system that is clearly exploitative and predatory. Interesting fact, in Portuguese, the native tongue of Brazil, they pronounce R's as H's. So my name, Ralph, becomes Ralph. Just thought I'd share that with you. This week, EA secured another patent for something that shouldn't be patented. The Dynamic Difficulty Adjustment Patent application aims to protect a system that will make games harder or easier depending on how the person playing is doing. So if the game detects that a game journalist is playing, it knows to just crank down the difficulty to super easy mode and then, you know, the game will get higher review scores. No, but for real, this patent only protects EA's specific approach to Dynamic Difficulty Adjustment. It doesn't patent the very concept of dynamic difficulty scaling, so you'll still continue to get spam blue shelled in Mario Kart when you're first, and you'll still get all those triple mushroom boosters when you're coming in last. Remember the HoloLens, that super cool technology that was showcased with the Minecraft demo where people were building shit on their coffee table? Well, that hardware is finally getting a release in at least one region, the Middle East, or wherever else the US chooses to fight its wars. Microsoft has signed a $22 billion deal with the US Army to adapt the HoloLens for military use. You really can't make this shit up. A group of Microsoft's employees sent an open letter to Microsoft CEO Satya Nadella, who said they believed the HoloLens would be used to help architects, engineers, surgeons, and to push the frontiers of gaming. Satya responded, lol. And finally, this is a real story. I thought this was a fake April Fool's thing that was just too ridiculous to even include in my April Fool's roundup last week. But no, this is real. Okay, you ready? Intel are working on software that will automatically beep out toxic gamer chat. The interface 
is incredible. It has sliders for racism and xenophobia and misogyny and white nationalism. Like it's a fucking FOV slider. It's like, oh, I always have my xenophobia settings to max, but I like to keep my white nationalism on low to improve performance. There is a toggle for the N word. This is an actual piece of software that might actually be a good idea in the sense that it will let you run a chat on a stream and make it more family friendly, or you just use it to block out heaps of the toxic shit that gamers actually do say online. It's something that you would enable on your end so it won't affect anybody else. I mean, yeah, it does make sense, but like, really? A white nationalism slider? I think that UI needs some serious work. So what got announced or delayed this week? Well, Streets of Rage 4 is getting some DLC. The retro-inspired side-scrolling beat-em-up captured hearts when it released last year, and it racked up a few Game of the Year nominations as well. The Mr. X Nightmare DLC adds three new playable characters, new moves for existing characters, new weapons, and of course, new levels to play through. No release date on this yet, but it's slated as coming soon. Okay, this one is weird. Uh, just, just take a look at the trailer. <laughs> Ghosts is a live action horror game, like those old games we still use as examples of the worst video games ever made. These guys think they can make this formula work somehow. From the trailer, I'm not really getting that vibe, but okay. The big play here is that if you buy this game, you will only be able to play it at 10 o'clock at night, your local time. Like the game will literally just be a black screen if you try and play it at any other time. I don't know why they thought that this would be a thing that people would like, as if, you know, someone's like, oh, I wasn't sure if I was gonna buy that weird live action horror game, but then I learned that you could only play it at 10 p.m. and I was like, sold. Anyway, there's no date on this yet, but it's, it's so weird. See you at 10 p.m., I guess? Ghostbusters? Neo The World Ends With You is a sequel to the cult classic DS exclusive. The new version is coming to Switch and PS4 and got a release date this week, the 27th of July to be exact. A lot of excitement for this one, so here's hoping it delivers. Edge of Eternity. Now this is also a funny one. It's a JRPG, except it's not made in Japan. It's made in France, actually, by Midgar Studio. It's been in early access on PC for a long, long time, and it's finally releasing in 1.0 on June 8th, with console releases coming in quarter four of this year. It's currently sitting at 75% mostly positive on Steam, so not incredible, not terrible. Hopefully the 1.0 patch rounds things out and delivers something nice. No one. Absolutely no one. Nintendo. Pac-Man 99. Pac-Man Battle Royale is a thing that now exists, or at least it will when Nintendo releases it. It was announced this week in a boisterous trailer, and it kind of just makes sense. Like, no one asked for this, but no one asked for Tetris 99 either, and when we saw it, we were like, yeah, sure, this should exist. This is coming bundled with your Nintendo Online membership, so you won't need to pay extra for it. You're already paying enough for using Nintendo's horrendous online services. No date yet, but out soon, no doubt. Alex Kidd in Miracle World is getting a remake. Now, those who are old enough to have had a Master System will remember that this was the game that started up when the cartridge you inserted wasn't working, which meant that you then needed to pull out the cartridge, blow into it, and hope that the stupid Alex Kidd logo wouldn't appear again to taunt you. This is a remake, but it will add new levels, new boss fights, new music, and a boss fight rush mode. It's coming to all platforms on the 24th of June. And finally, some big and very disappointing delay news this week from Arcane Studios, who announced that their upcoming time-bending PvEVP hybrid death loop has been delayed from the 21st of May to September 14th. That's a pretty chunky delay, and not the first either, but that's okay. Arcane have consistently delivered some of the highest quality immersive sims we've ever seen, and if they say they need more time, then I say take it, take all the time you need. Deathloop is still a PS4 and PC exclusive, even though it's being published by Microsoft, one of the weird holdover arrangements from the Bethesda Microsoft acquisition. We can expect an Xbox release after the exclusive window expires, whenever that might be. 
Let's take a look back at what was released last week. Not a whole lot to talk about. Oddworld Soulstorm hit PlayStation and the Epic Store. It seems to be getting middling reviews, sitting at around 70 on Metacritic for both critic and user score. Destructoid had a soft spot for it, scoring at 85 and saying, quote, You'd be hard pressed to name very many games that are doing what this series is doing in 2021, while Push Square was less charitable, scoring it a 40 and saying, quote, it's a tough sell for anyone coming to the series fresh. Oddworld is a PS Plus game this month for PS5 owners, so you can check it out for yourself if you have a PS5, which you probably don't. Thanks, Ever Given. The other one was Trials of Fire, a deck building roguelike, not unlike Slay the Spire. This one has done very well for itself, sitting at around 80 on Metacritic and 85% very positive on Steam. PC Gamer enjoyed it, scoring it an 85 and saying, quote, Trials of Fire's list of features may read like a video game word salad, but the resulting combination makes for a fine RPG feast. Kind of a weird quote, but the bottom line is they liked it. What's coming out this week then? A few things, not a lot though. Ashwalkers makes its way to Steam on the 15th. It's a survival game where your decisions will determine your journey toward one of 34 endings. It's got a nice aesthetic and it's black and white, so Zack Snyder, this one's for you. Saga Frontier is getting a remaster for PS4, Switch, PC, iOS, and Android. It's out on the 15th as well. Not a lot to say, it's Saga Frontier, but with a new paint job. Biggest release this week is MLB The Show, pretty much the only baseball game in town at this point. I'm not an American, so I can't comment on this weird stick-based game, since we have our own weird stick-based game here, except our matches uh, last for five days. Uh, who thought that was a good idea? Anyway, MLB is made by a Sony studio, but it's coming to Game Pass on day one, the 20th of this month. It's such a weird turn of events, but anyway, baseball fans that happen to own an Xbox, this one's for you. Put this on your radar. As a sucker for games with incredible art styles, Sable really has me clocked here. Developed by indie studio Shedworks, Sable is an open world exploration game that tells the story of a nomad girl doing something. We don't know what it is yet, but it's sure to be something cool. You can explore the desert on your Star Wars pod racer engine. You can discover fallen spacecraft and spelunk in their ruins. You can chat with the locals and help them out. There's a lot going on here, but even if the game itself totally blows, I'm still going to be down to just wander around this world and soak up all of this incredible art. No release date for Sable yet, but be sure to wishlist it on Steam since that helps the developer out when you do that. Sort of free stuff time. Middle of the month is always quiet, but we do have a few things. Epic is getting a special bumper week this week with three free games instead of just one. Right now, you can still grab three out of ten season two, but come April 16th, you'll be able to get your hands on Deponia, The Complete Journey, Ken Follett's The Pillars of Earth, and The First Tree. I'll admit that while I have heard of these games, I do not know anything about these games. Hopefully, at least one of them is good. Game Pass got its monthly refresh as well, and it's pretty good. Not the best we've seen, but pretty solid. Highlights include Zombie Army 4 Dead War, MLB The Show, and a little known indie title called Grand Theft Auto 5 from an up and coming developer called Rockstar Games, which I believe is an offshoot from that energy drink. Good to know they're entering the world of video games and not leaving it all to monster energy. Finally, if you're looking for a World War II shooter, check out Enlisted. It just entered open beta, so anyone on PC can play it for free right now. It's getting some good buzz, quite a few reviews looking very positive. It's Battlefield more than it's Call of Duty, so check it out while you wait for the next Battlefield to be unveiled, which should be really soon, by the way. It's Sony week this week, so it's only right that our feel-good story comes from there. This week on the PlayStation blog, Sony unveiled Abandoned. Here's some of the teaser. Imagine waking up at a place far, far away from home. Away from your lost ones. Away from friends. Away from safety trying to understand how you got there. No gameplay was shown, but according to the developer Blue Box, it's a first-person survival horror shooter. No big deal, right? Well, the thing is, no one had ever heard of Blue Box before, when all of a sudden they bust out with this PS5 exclusive that Sony themselves are pump priming, and it's a horror game. So for some reason, everyone started to think that this was actually a Hideo Kojima game, and he was just fucking with us. That he'd set up some fake company in the Netherlands, and he created this fake trailer, and all of it would culminate in this big reveal where it's actually like a new Silent Hill game and he's making it. 
Ridiculous. Firstly, this is a real company that has existed for a number of years, even though they have a very patchy release record and have never produced anything close to a AAA game. And secondly, you know it's not a Hideo Kojima game because if it was, the trailer would have looked like this. And in that spirit, I would like to say that this week in video games is a Skill Up production, written by Skill Up, produced by Skill Up, starring Skill Up, edited by someone else, directed by Skill Up. And if you enjoyed the show, do your boy a solid and throw it a like, hit the subscribe button and ding the notification bell so you'll never miss a video. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you next week. This video was brought to you by Squarespace, the best place to build a professional looking website for your hobby, business, or just because you feel like it. Let's say you want to have a career in video games or content creation. Having your own website would be a damn good start. You could use it to profile your own artwork if you were an artist. You could showcase your best writing there if that's your thing. Or if you wanted to be a games journalist or a commentator, you could start your own blog. With Squarespace, the process is always simple. Just choose from one of their many, many professional looking templates, update it using their intuitive tools, and voila, you've got yourself a very schmick looking website in no time. There's even more advanced features like the ability to schedule posts or traffic overview analytics so you can gain insights into where the clicks are coming from. To get started, visit squarespace.com and when you're ready to get serious, visit squarespace.com forward slash skill up for a 10% discount on your first purchase purchase of a website or a domain name. Thanks Squarespace for sponsoring the video and thank you for watching it. Thanks for watching my video. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down so I know to do better for next time. If you enjoyed yourself, consider subscribing. And if you really enjoyed yourself, maybe consider hitting that notification bell so you never miss a video. You can see my patrons here on the left. They're awesome. They're amazing. If you want to join them, check out my Patreon page. Thank you again. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.